Hey, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. <clears throat> My name is Jorge Otero Pailos. I'm the director of the Historic Preservation Program and of the PhD program in preservation. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, Sarah Grace Godwin, who is our uh, assistant director of the of, of the program. Um, I've been in touch with some of you via email. Uh, thank you for expressing interest in the PhD program. Um, today, we're going to take a little bit of time to go over what the program is and some tips for applications and, um, you know, answer some of your questions uh, about the program. So we'll take about um, the next half an hour or so to go over some of the details, and then we will turn over to your questions. Um, so why don't we just get started right away? Um, the PhD program at Columbia University sits in the School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. Uh, on the bottom, you see Columbia University's historic campus. Columbia University's campus is rather large. It it goes from like 110th Street to 200 and something Street. It includes research facilities, an entire hospital. Um, this is the historic campus where we are at, which includes a lot of the humanities, engineering, the professional schools, architecture, and um, journalism, the law, etc. So on the top, you see the image of um, the building Avery Hall. That's where our library is. It's also where um, the offices, the administrative offices are, and some of the studios are. But the school is actually divided into multiple buildings. So we have um, about five buildings that we um, that we move around in. Um, the PhD in historic preservation is... Um, it sits, is housed within the Preservation Technology Laboratory. So you will see preservation technology, obviously, is very important. And we expect all applicants to have some uh, something to say about technology. So we'll get into that a little bit more in a second. Um, we also have one of the world's greatest um, architecture and art libraries. Avery Library. It has not only books, but it also has archives. It has original drawings. It has original editions of books, um, uh, entire archives of architects. Um, so it is a place of research. People come from all over the world just to do research here. So we are very lucky to have this at our fingertips, and we expect all PhD students to, to use it. We also have a series of research facilities around, and one of them is the Natural Materials Lab, which is run by a professor, Lola Benalone, which is on the faculty of the PhD program in preservation. So she's interested in natural materials and particularly earthen materials. <clears throat> and you'll see that materiality is a really important part of our approach to preservation and technology. So that's something that you can use. And we encourage you as you think about your application to think about how you might connect to some of these or how might you use in your research some of these uh, existing facilities. So now let's uh, dig in a little bit more into the details of the, of the preservation uh, program. Um, so it's a it's we accept one student per year. So um, it is a very competitive application process, and essentially we um, we are offering a position that is a five year position. You can think of it as a, a five year job. Um, the first year you're going to be doing just coursework, so you're going to be taking classes. Uh, the second year you're going to be taking classes and doing some teaching. The third year, you're going to be doing your qualifying exams, the exams that tell us that you are ready to write a uh, dissertation. That's the first semester of your third year. The second semester of your third year, you're going to be writing your proposal, your dissertation proposal, and you're going to be doing some teaching as well. <clears throat> now, it's interesting because you, in your application, you will write essentially a proposal for your research. But two years into the program, you will probably revise that research proposal. So, you know, we expect you to have an idea of what you want to do when you come in, but 
<clears throat> we don't hold you to it. We let you change a idea when, when you're in the program. Anyway, your fourth year, you're going to be basically doing your dissertation. You're going to be doing research. You're going to be doing uh, a project. You're going to be doing a, a applied project, and you're going to be writing. So um, that's going to be most of your fourth year and maybe perhaps some of your fifth year. But in your fifth year, you're going to finish up your writing, and then you're going to defend your dissertation probably in the late spring of that year and hopefully graduate in the summer of your, of your fifth year. Uh, in terms of support, the, um, the position is a full tuition coverage. So we pay your tuition costs at Columbia. We also pay you a modest stipend to live in New York City. Um, now, some students decide to do a little bit of work on the side to supplement that. Um, you know, it's as I said, it's a modest stipend. Um, you also get a summer stipend that you can use um, to travel or to, you know, wh whichever way you want. The annual stipend is paid during the nine months of the school year. So the summer stipend is for those um, three months of the summer. Um, we cover your health insurance. We also cover um, the health insurance of a dependent. So for example, if you have a significant other or you're married or have a child, you know, we can, we can cover that. And we also cover 75% of your dental insurance. <clears throat> this might be too much information for those of you that come from countries where you actually have a national health care system. We don't have that here in the United States. It's uh, all private. So that's why, you know, it's an important detail for you to know. Now, okay, so every year we open up our PhD to a particular subject or topic. And this year, what we would like to um, invite our research proposals that deal with interrogating materiality through experimental preservation technologies. So we want you to think about different ways in which we might question, rethink, approach questions of materiality. As you know, materiality is at the core of questions of authenticity and preservation. Material authenticity is really important in, in preservation, but it's also coming into question given new technologies, digital technologies, fabrication technologies. It goes hand in hand with questions of craft, of workmanship, you know, the material requires a whole labor force and people around them. And we want you to think about projects, dissertation research, that will question this notion of materiality through the application of new technologies, of emerging technologies, or traditional technologies in new ways. So we want you to think about ways and in your application, tell us about ways in which you want to develop this experimental preservation method to and aspire to combine this empirical knowledge so you, that will be gained through experimentation with theoretical speculation. So after you do all this work, you will hopefully come up with new ideas about what preservation is. You might not have those yet, but you will come up with them and we want to hear about those ideas. What do you think you might you might be uh, questioning? What kind of um, preservation ideas that are out there today you you might be questioning? So a dissertation in the preservation program is quite different than dissertations in most other programs. It can vary greatly. We accept you know a great variety of of dissertation formats, and I will show you some examples of the students that are currently teaching in the program. But what we want you to focus on is a dissertation project that will have two components. One will be more practical, involving physical experimentation that you will do applied to existing buildings, to materials, to objects. Um, you will maybe do research on materials or fragments. We have a great collection of materials and fragments in the Preservation Technology Lab. Um, and you might do work in the field as well. And there will be a theoretical component in which you will be experimenting intellectually and developing existing knowledge, researching the histories and theories that of the field that might be in Avery Library, an archive, or in other archives or uh, in the field. So you will be doing practical theory and theory and practice 
you know, the two are related and we're very interested in the relationship between theory and practice. This will be, this is a place where you can question practice and also question theory. So, um, um, we want to think about, you know, just to give you some examples, because some of you will, will be thinking about this um, together. So what could be a, a, a dissertation in, in the preservation program? So you could do a dissertation, for example, on artistic interventions in preservation. You could investigate how contemporary art is used as a method for deploying preservation technologies within existing buildings and places and how art is also a way of reframing cultural significance, engaging with communities, but also using different kinds of technologies um, that might not been traditionally used in preservation. So for example, projection mapping uh, onto facades of buildings or other kinds of new, new technologies. Another research topic um, could be focused around expanding preservation. Uh, through the lens of materials. So challenging the idea that preservation should be focusing on a single building and expanding preservation to be thinking about the whole of the existing built environment. So not just monuments that are already designated, but everything. So in this sense, you might be looking at a project that addresses the challenges posed by the aging building stock that is uh, commonplace around the world but how this building stock can be challenged by sustainability and climate change, but also maybe offer interesting new ways to address climate change. So for example, retrofitting the existing building stock. So think about what roles preservationists might play in these building adaptations so that they're sustainable and culturally relevant. Another kind of project might involve, for example, sensory preservation. So exploring methods for preserving the intangible qualities of architecture. So that would be a way of questioning the traditional idea that materiality and preservation is, let's say, wood, brick, concrete, steel, right, uh, clay. And here you might be thinking about materials such as airborne particles or dust or smell, which is airborne um, chemical compounds. Or you might be thinking about notions of atmospheres, both philosophically and, and physically. You might be thinking about the impact of these te technologies that might preserve these, um, these materials on the perception of heritage uh, or on the attachment that people have to heritage. Um, another kind of project might involve more the ethics of preservation. So for example, applying forensic technologies such as material testing, spectral analysis, you know, XRF, um, to address ethical questions of material authenticity and authorship. Uh, you might want to explore, for example, how digital technologies help to track where materials come from and, um, and, and, the, and begin to examine these questions of the uh, ownership, authorship, transmission of heritage, um, and how that affects our notion of heritage when we might be looking at the whole, let's say, material flow through the built environment rather than a particular uh, assembly of those materials into a building. Uh, other research projects might be, for example, dealing with material traces and memory. Uh, so developing new methodologies for preserving material residues, such as, you know, dust, surface patina, uh, and thinking of them as key elements of a building's historical narrative. You might be looking more at a building, not just as a kind of stylistic example, but you might be looking at a building and the importance of preserving buildings because they are environmental sensors. Uh, but how do we read the, the environmental um, information, data that is embedded in these Building. So you might employ high resolution scanning and photogrammetry to capture the details of the decay that has been caused by environmental forces. And, and you might document the material residues of pollution and create you know, very detailed records that would allow you 
to read and decode these subtle elements and de and reconstruct the history of both the building and the surrounding environment. Um, another example, just to really jog your mind and get you thinking here, could be um, pr you know a project that involves environmental and invisible preservation. So you could be applying advanced monitoring techniques, for example, thermal imaging or lidar scanning to study the unseen aspect of buildings, such as, you know, airborne pollutants, air circulation, even thinking about microbial life. Um, there's been a lot of experiments using uh, microbes and uh, bacteria to, for example, in cleaning or their role in soiling buildings. So you would use technologies to understand these processes and preserve the environmental factors that are integral to the history, the social and environmental history of buildings. Um, you might think of preservation and temporal decay. Uh, so for example, you know, thinking about considering how you can design decay in time and, and be more intentional about how that is, you know, in preservation, we are constantly designing the ending of buildings. So you might really develop for example, time-lapse photography or simulation models to track and document the decay of buildings over time. And you might research preservation technologies to manage this and monitor and design this slow transformation. Um, you might preserve material flows, for example, instead of buildings. So you might examine the intersection of historic preservation and the circular economy practices within the building industry. You might explore how architects and preservationists can mediate between economic, technological, and environmental considerations in adaptive reuse projects. And so this research might really be investigating, for example, mass-produced post-war architecture, which challenges traditional notions of material authenticity in, in, in preservation practices. Um, you might just a couple more here of ideas that you might be that might, you know, kind of get your mind going, uh, thinking about public art and community engagement, uh, how public art projects can engage communities in the process of preservation and reframe, reframe public interaction with historic buildings. You could leverage preservation technologies, for example, like digital platforms or augmented reality to get people deeper into the material world, not away from it, but deeper, and develop virtual and augmented environments that allow communities to understand and engage with preservation efforts in real time and allow for a feedback mechanism to, for example, government agencies or other stakeholders and, um, and stewards of heritage. And lastly, you might, for example, um, look at the political and social histories of uh, materials in architecture. So you might research how um, the preservation, uh, the physical preservation of buildings um, is contested uh, or related to complex political histories or how to balance the material in physical and political and social aspects of heritage. So you could, for example, experiment with digital storytelling and multimedia tools to document and interpret the social and political narratives of buildings. Uh, you could develop experimental applications of technologies like digital archives and GIS mapping to connect communities with the cultural narratives uh, entangled in material pla places and to develop more holistic preservation approaches. So all of these are examples. I'm sure that you have your own ideas. This is not to say that only, we will only accept things, you know, uh, projects that are following these suggestions. These are really meant to give you a taste of what it could be, but we really accept any and all uh, proposals. So we're really looking to you and your ideas. So... The preservation, you, you will want to think about which faculties you, you know, how we can help you and the kinds of things that we do. So if we don't have an expertise in your research topic, it's probably not a good idea to come to Columbia because we will not be able to help you. So you want to think about how each of us can help you. So um, these are the faculty that are in the preservation program. 
Um, I, as an architect and artist, uh, and with a degree in history as well, can help you with projects in, in technology and artistic engagement and developing these kinds of uh, uh, projects and in intellectual work. Uh, I've worked with the theory of preservation. I've written a lot of a preservation theory and textbooks on preservation theory. So that relationship between theory and practice, something I could help you with. Erica Avrami, um, who leads a number of different projects at Columbia, expert on community engaged research, on sustainability, uh, on uh, um, questions of climate change. Uh, decarbonization, so she could uh, help you with all those topics and more, of course. Uh, Lola Benalon, who is an engineer and directs the Natural Materials Lab, um, uh, can help you with building technology, uh, calculations, uh, material uh, experiments. Uh, Mabel Wilson, who is a historian and architect and also an artist, um, works on African-American heritage and uh, memory. And Lucia Ale, who is co-director of, um, actually she's director of the Buell Center for American Architecture, is really focused on the modern period, but has done a lot of research on concrete, for example, and and on land as a as a building material, and uh, is is very interested in questions of materiality and systems thinking. Um, there's other PhD faculty at Columbia, and I really encourage all of you to look carefully at the biographies and research of each of these um, uh, professors. And then we also have people that are outside of GSAP that are working in preservation, like Aaron Passell, Anurada Siddiqui, who works on questions of migration, uh, and uh, in art and archaeology, Barry Bergdahl, who was the former curator of the Museum of Modern Art, and Zainab Celik, who also works with questions. He's a historian, and she works on questions of materiality. A lot of historic preservation faculty um, that are um, at Columbia can help you with various subjects. They're engineers, they're historians, they're architects, they're conservators, chemists, um, uh, uh, you know, they really span the gamut. They work on digital fabrication. So you can have uh, a lot of support there. Um, there's also, we encourage you to really think about how you're going to use Columbia to your best advantage. So what research centers and institutes are you going to be working with? Um, here's an example of all of the ones that, you know, are kind of obvious. But I would say something to think about is we have the new climate school at Columbia University. It is an opportunity for you to make connections there as you investigate materiality through experimental preservation technologies. Uh, we have an Earth Institute that captures uh, data on climate change. So there is a lot of things and a lot of places that you can connect to. And you can just mention this in your, your application that you're interested in, in um, this or that different uh, institute. So let me give you, uh, we're a small program. Let me give you a sense of the um, work that some of our current students are doing. <clears throat> Shu Yi Yin has been writing a dissertation, which is a history of 3D digitization technology and its global networks and architectural heritage preservation. So this is really the first history of digitization and preservation. Um, and it really uh, is contributing new knowledge to the discipline by helping us understand, you know, the, the photogrammetry and 3D scanning, their origins, their entanglements with uh, military technology, for example, their historical entanglements with, with moments of war in Europe and other places and how uh, it began to push the idea of, of um, how, how heritage became essentially a laboratory for a lot of these different uh, technologies that help them move forward. So it's a really interesting um, dissertation that also thinks about heritage as soft power in moving international affairs and geopolitics and uh, using technology to advance uh, political agendas, essentially. Um, Anna Gasha is working on 
the exchange between countries of technological knowledge. She's very interested in, for example, how tech knowledge of how to deal with earthquakes and natural disasters in heritage has been transferred from country to country. And what she's really interested is the biases that have gone into those transfers. So the way, for example, that um, uh, traditional buildings have been demoted, made considered to be less capable of withstanding disasters and, uh, and wrongly perceived to be more dangerous than contemporary uh, construction methods. So this is a very important work because it is reclaiming traditional building methods uh, in a very uh, high stakes game um, of disaster risk mitigation. Uh, Robert uh, Edwards uh, is looking at the experience of black migration and movement and mobility in the United States. Um, as you all probably know, um, the United States has a very fraught history uh, of racial relations. And uh, in the 20th century, there was a great migration from the South to the North of African-Americans. That's what he's very interested in. And he's interested in the material fabric that enabled that migration. So his work entails the vehicles, the buses, that African Americans traveled on from the South to the North and the route of bus stations that connected the North and the South. And this is an interesting project for you to think about because um, it tells you a little bit about our experimental preservation way of thinking in the PhD program. You see Robert in that image next to a bus. Now, Robert has purchased this bus and his dissertation entails a practical component of restoring this bus and transforming it artistically into a movable object that can reinterpret the great migration from the South to the North. So through the hands-on experience of intervening with new technologies into this bus, he is also questioning ideas about preservation and now thinking about new questions about authenticity and restoration. And does the bus need to be restored as a working bus that you can drive? You know, um, does what is is heritage need to be all in one place or can it move around? So he's thinking about site specificity and questioning notions of site specificity. He's also questioning the idea that preservation should be focused only on buildings. And he's uh, looking at buildings as part of a network of, of um, material flows and objects. So furniture that goes in and out of buildings, uh, window assemblies, and then all the way out to vehicles, for example. So a uh, very interesting thesis uh, dissertation. Deka Hussein is... Um, just starting in the program, uh, but she is very interested in sound and digital media and, as a new technology that helps to preserve cultural memory. And Shingao is um, just started this year, and she's working on earthen architectural uh, preservation and materials conservation practice. So she is very much between the Preservation Technology Lab and the Natural Materials Lab, working together uh, with Professor Lola Benalon. So um, let's talk a little bit about admissions um, and your qualifications. So you must, in order to apply, hold a master's in historic preservation. If you don't hold a master's in historic preservation, you must have relevant experience in preservation and a master's degree in a related field such as architecture, art, engineering, or planning. Now, why do we ask for this? Because at a PhD level, we expect you to really have a command of preservation already. 
you know, you shouldn't be coming into preservation, not knowing anything about preservation and having to start, you know, as if you were to do a master's. In that case, we would recommend that you, if you don't know anything about preservation, we recommend that you first do the master's in historic preservation, whether at Columbia or at another university, and then apply to the PhD. Um, you have a deadline of January 9th. You need to send us your transcripts, a statement of purpose, a curriculum vitae, three letters of recommendations. You don't have to do GREs, but if you've done them or will be doing them, it's always helpful. Uh, but again, we don't look at those uh, as a criteria for uh, entry. Uh, and you must show proficiency in English. So if you are an international student, you must have that English proficiency test done. Um, you should have a sample of scholarly writing. Um, so this should be a, something you wrote for already for another program, or it could be a published paper. And we also encourage you to submit a portfolio if it's optional. But we, if you've done projects, physical projects that demonstrate your ability to work in a lab or work in the field, uh, we, we would love to see those. That's very helpful. Um, we make our decisions in March. That's when you'll be hearing for, from us. Now, since you all made the effort to be here, let's talk about some tips, some suggestions for how to make your application successful. You will have to write a, a statement of research. That, this is the most important document in the whole application. It should be, you know, three pages, five pages. It should not be a lot more than that. And you should make sure that you speak to some key issues. You should describe the current state of knowledge in experimental preservation of existing buildings and materials. What do you see the field like? What is the state of current understanding? What are the key ideas within that that interest you and why? What are the key projects that interest you and why? Who are the key figures that interest you and why? Who, have, who, have, who has inspired you? Uh, who do you think is doing things right? Who do you, who do you feel you, know, you want to build on, the, on that work? We, this is really important because we want to know what you know and how you see preservation. What is your understanding of preservation? So we want a, a, a deep engagement. You should be citing books. You should be, you should be using footnotes. You should be really demonstrating that you are um, at a level beyond the master's ready to do a PhD, you understand the field. You should, as a second piece of this uh, statement, and you could follow this order even as you write, describe what's missing. What are the gaps in knowledge? What are the things that you have experienced in your work or research to say, you know, we really need to know more about this topic. We need to engage this more fully. What knowledge are we missing? in the experimental preservation of existing buildings and materials. So how do we address that knowledge? So um, then you should say something about yourself. What are your qualifications for undertaking this research? What makes you the right person for doing this research on this topic? And then you should describe how you plan to use the Columbia facilities. How are you going to use the preservation technology lab? How are you going to do practical research? What is the physical experimentation that you're going to do applied to existing materials in order to question how we've preserved materials and buildings so far? How are you going to use Avery Library? What kind of theoretical research? Where are you going to start? What kind of what are the what are the you know, the, the methods that you're going to follow, are you going to be more of a historical researcher? You're going to look at the history of a particular idea in the library. Uh, are you going to be looking um, at different, you know, manuals or, ca um, for example, we have a very large collection of trade catalogs, of industrial catalogs. Will you be using those? 
you know, really get into the nitty gritty of how you're going to use these facilities and other facilities. There's the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Um, there are other libraries. There's um, there might be other places you might say, look, I'm doing a dissertation that is going to engage a different country. It's going to be in Brazil or it's going to be in, you know, China or it's going to be in France or wherever it's going to be or Ghana. And you're going to say, I'm going to go to research facilities in those places. I'm going to study in libraries. And these are the libraries I'm very interested in. Um, then talk a little bit about the faculty that you're interested in at Columbia. Who are the people that you feel are the most interesting and most helpful for your research? Who can help you? Um, and then think about... Um, Tell us a little bit about how this is going, you know, to impact your career. What do you want to do with this degree? Um, you know, a PhD in preservation is there to help you become a researcher. And that research um, ability can be applied to many things. It can be applied to teaching. It can be applied to developing uh, work in the field with governments it can or with um, nonprofit groups or it can be applied to start new companies whatever it is that you feel this phd is going to help you do we want to hear about that um also another very important thing in your application are the letters of recommendation so you should be asking people that have worked with you in a research capacity, faculty that you've worked with, that, you, that you've connected with, and faculty that already have PhD degrees. Because what we want them to tell us is, do they think that you're going to be a successful PhD student? What are your, how do you work? Uh, what are the successes that you've had so far? So you should really talk to the people that are going you're approaching and ask them whether they can speak to those to those questions. Um, uh, tell them that a typical letter of recommendation is about two to three pages long. Uh, it is an involved process. So um, this is an American thing, but you know we really look very carefully at those letters. We don't want letters that are one paragraph. And that say, and this, you know, those are more the kinds of letters that you get in the business world where, you know, they say, oh, this is a great person, great to work with, blah, blah, blah. You know, you should hire them. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for letters that really talk about your work and how you did research and how you are capable of doing research. Um, so send us writing samples. That's another very important part of your application writing samples that have to do with preservation. Why are we reading these samples? Because we want to know how you think. We want to know your creative thinking process. We want to know how you put ideas together. So show us the work in which you put ideas together in writing. And you may also submit a portfolio that show us how you put ideas visually together and in practice. If you send us a portfolio, it shouldn't just be one project after another. You should be describing in your portfolio how you were conducting research, how these were research projects. What were you learning in these projects? What were the ideas that came out of them? Okay. And if you did work, group work, make sure you say what your role was. Okay. Because we will, we will not know otherwise. Okay, you can look at all this online in terms of required classes, but there are a series, you know, the program is very free. You get to pick practically all of your classes. You get to decide what you want to take in dialogue with me as director and in dialogue with the other faculty. But there are essentially only two really required classes, which are the PhD colloquium on your first and second years. And then you have to take some other PhD level classes, but you have a wide choice. 
So the only two classes that you don't have a choice for is the PhD preservation colloquium. These are methods classes teaching you how to do research, but the other ones you can pick. So be thinking about what you, what kinds of classes you would like to take. Look at our offerings and see what would you see yourself taking. Okay. Um, you, um, this is a five-year program. This is something that I already mentioned. Um, there is a kind of mid-moment uh, series of exams on your third year that qualify you to write your dissertation. Um, you must also have an extra language. Some of you already speak another language, but that language should be other than English, and it should be a language that allows you to do research in the topic that you want to do. So some of you want to do research in another country. Well, you know, you should be speaking that language. Um, okay, so you... Um, we, you are expected to finish in five years. Some people, for whatever reason, have some problems or need to take a little bit longer. You have a maximum of seven years. If you don't finish by seven years, you basically forfeit your degree. Um, but you should finish. We expect you to finish in five years. 